I don't think I can live with myself unless I get this engine to run. In the last video, I made this. It mostly resembles a combustion engine, except for the fact that it doesn't actually run. Getting there. But I actually learned a lot from you guys in the comments about things that I did wrong, or just things I completely missed. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fix everything wrong with it, I'm gonna introduce a new fuel system to it, and then hope to god that this thing's gonna run. After the events of the last video, the engine developed a pretty nasty piston slap. It's got some piston slap. And for those who are unaware of what piston slap is, or have just never owned a Subaru, let me explain. Piston slap is when the piston starts rocking back and forth on its way up and down the cylinder walls. It gets its name because it's essentially just slapping the walls. I initially just wrote it off as the cylinder being gouged, because if you have a look, it does look like this is the case. But when I took some measurements, it turns out that it's perfectly fine. But as it turns out, it was actually the skirts on the piston that had begun to worn out, and this is where the slapping was coming from. So naturally, instead of making a new one, I took the piston out, rotated it, put it back in, and it works perfectly fine. Of course, this isn't a surefire solution, it's probably going to do it again, but I think this should be a good enough solution so that we can actually get some test results. Now, this really pains me to admit, because I'm pretty sure one of the biggest reasons why the engine didn't run was because the timing was set way too late. On purpose. When I performed the very first test, when I used just a handheld butane torch, what actually ended up happening was the piston went up and it ignited too soon. Now, thankfully, the JB Weld gave out and it allowed the system to continue to move, because otherwise it probably would have been pretty catastrophic. Because I never actually set it back, we never really had a chance to see if it would run. Many people in the comments have told me that ideally I want it 15 degrees before top dead center. And this is true for engines that rev high enough. But I wanted to play things safe, so what I decided to do instead was actually set it at zero degrees. So this guarantees that it will be combusting at maximum compression, uh, but it should also prevent it from going backwards and causing kickback. Uh, with all that stuff out of the way, now things can get interesting. For a very, very long time, people in the comments have been suggesting I use a carburetor. Now, I always avoided buying one because my fear was that I would spend the money on one of those little carburetors and RC fluid for something that I wasn't even sure was going to work. Now, because this engine's much, much larger, it opens up a lot of opportunities for something like this. Uh, now, if it weren't obvious already, I did not make this carburetor because I already tried that and found out I'm not very good at it. I actually stole this. I stole this from an old weed eater that hadn't been used. I think. Since I finally learned my lesson to stop using butane and to switch over to a carburetor, I gotta use a fuel now. I have no idea what it is. It was some old cleaning solution that I'm pretty sure is like 100% alcohol. Either way, it's some pretty volatile stuff, so it should work just fine. As per many commenters' suggestions, I'm actually gonna use starter fluid to get things going. In case you're unaware, this stuff is uber flammable. Should get the engine going for long enough for it to start sucking in fuel from the carburetor. Uh, just like last time, I am gonna add some oil to the crankcase, that way it'll splash it around and keep the cylinder oiled. But I did learn from my mistake this time. I actually decided to plug it with this little brass piece and then I taped the end off. It's not perfectly airtight, and that's kind of what I want, because that means that the crankcase can still breathe, uh, and hopefully it's not just going to spill oil out of it. To keep things simple, what I did is I just made a custom lid for this already existing mason jar that I'll use for the fuel tank. Basically, there's two lines. There's the fuel line and then the return line. Now, once I start pressing the primer bulb, you can see that when I start pushing on it, the fuel is sucked through the fuel line, brought to the carburetor, and then it's returned back to the jar. And with that, that's pretty much everything I need to get this test started. But I was thinking, this engine may just explode, or it may not work at all. Truth be told, I was actually trembling at this point because I couldn't tell if it was from the excitement, the anticipation, or just the fear that I could cause irreparable damage to my face. It just felt like this moment here was determining whether this thing that I worked so, so hard for and everyone wanted to see so, so badly, uh, if it was either going to be a bust or if it was all going to pay off. But you know what? There's only one way to find out. Alright, this is take one. Oh! No way! Oh!
I was stoked. It actually ran. Thank God I set up two cameras because I was not going to let this camera lens ruin it for me. Even if it was only for a few seconds, just hearing that engine come to life meant so much to me because I had been working on this forever, it felt like, and finally I was able to get this thing to run. Now, considering this engine is made from plastic, uh, it did surprise me that it even worked as well as it did, but I was really curious to find out why it quit running. Okay, this is kind of like the what's inside portion of the video where I'm gonna take this thing apart and then find out what broke on it. I'm pretty sure it's something to do with the head, but we'll just have to take it apart. All right, so my first order of business is to get this timing belt off, which is, eh, it's all right. It's all greasy, ew. So I foolishly added the screw here, thinking that I was actually going to use it, which I didn't. Okay, looks all right. And see what is wrong in the valve train. Oh, uh, so the exhaust valve has been permanently smashed down. Not good. I'm really curious to see if there's any like charring or any burn marks on the inside, uh, cause that would be pretty epic. Oh, that smells like charcoal. Ew. Uh, you can see the cylinder is okay. Does it have this compression? Yeah, it has like perfect vacuum. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with the cylinder. Uh, but this head's pretty gnarly. So having a look at this head, you can see it's melted the TPU and it's fused it uh, with all of its surroundings. And it's even kind of created these like little spiderweb bits uh, on the inside. It's honestly pretty remarkable to me that the only thing that really suffered any damage was literally the exhaust valve and everything else was perfectly fine. Okay, so I believe the reason why the exhaust valve was the one that suffered damage instead of the intake valve was actually because uh, it's still combusting as it's exiting the exhaust and this is what's causing a burnt valve. This is actually a thing that can happen on any engine. Uh, if it's not tuned properly, you actually can risk burning your exhaust valves. And that's kind of why when you see flames shooting out of an engine, Unless it's tuned to do that, it's usually a big problem. I still think it's pretty surreal that it ran the way it did. I never expected that to happen. I kind of just expected it to go bum, 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 bum. But yeah, overall, I am super satisfied with the way this went. To be completely honest, I wasn't planning on making this video, not this soon at least, but just seeing how many people in the comments section were so, so passionate about this thing and just wanted to see it run, uh, it gave me motivation even when things got really tough. Now, while the engine didn't last very long, uh, that was to be expected. I think the point I was really getting at was just to prove that you can 3D print something as cool as a running engine on something you can get for like half the price of a PlayStation. But I think the key takeaway from all of this is that through perseverance and innovation, you can accomplish things far beyond the limitations of your resources. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and giving me so much support on all the other ones that I had made. Uh, and if you're new to the channel and you want to see more of this type of stuff that I make, then maybe you want to consider subscribing. Anyways, that was all I had planned for this video, so peace guys.